Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk to you about a pretty, like maybe let's say new to my life, but not new to my understanding um, modality that I want to share with you that's been really helpful for me. It's really, really cool. I'm a huge fan of collecting data in a way that is useful to you. So so I work with a lot of people that have chronic health problems. And then the, the when you're looking at gathering data, this is usually done through functional testing. So you're looking at like organic acids, urine tests, stool testing, um, saliva, te saliva tests for like uh, for cortisol and like hormone panels and things like that. This is the kind of data that we're usually working with. However, these are all snapshots in time. These are all just a a one-off look at what's happening in the body right now. And this, this can be useful. Like this can be helpful data. This, this, this isn't, I'm not saying this is bad, but what I prefer and what I find works more effectively for me and for, for my clients. And I think just generally like people in general is actually having data in your hands data that you know how to use, data that you know what it means. Because like, I, I bet you, if you're watching this and you've done any, any of those aforementioned tests, the organic acids test, stool testing, um, cortisol testing or hormone testing, there's a good likelihood that there's so much potential in those in, in that testing that you haven't been able to extrapolate. Like so much um, information or so much like insight that's been missed either by previous practitioners or by yourself, like just because of lack of understanding or not like piecing things together. Again, not saying I'm not I'm not like hating on this. That kind of testing is great. The practitioners that read it is is awesome. Like I do so I do a lot of that as well. But my point is there's a, a way of of testing your your healing, there's a way of measuring your healing that you have access to on a daily basis and you can use like it's very practical. It's like a very practical thing for you to 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 be to be like using on a daily basis. And this metric is HRV, heart rate variability. So this is, so how, how do we measure it? First of all, this is very easily done either by like a smartwatch. So like the Apple, like, like the Apple smartwatch can, can do this. You can get, um, you can get things that you wear when you go to sleep, like a chest strap that kind of goes around your chest. Um, you can use an aura ring. That's what I use. So I got an aura ring, um, last December. And it's, you can see it's really small. It's just a little ring. You have to charge it like twice a week and it measures a whole bunch of different things. All of which is very helpful and very useful data if you know what those things mean. But the one that I'm really focusing on today is HRV, heart rate variability. So let me explain to you why this is, why this is important. Why this is such a cool, um, a cool metric to measure. Why is it so helpful? So two things that I've, so I'll, I'll, so this is new to me. Like I've known about this for a very long time. I've known about this for like like five years, but I never like practically implemented it. I got the aura ring, and now I've been playing around with this, like doing a lot more research, experimenting with it. Kind of just like it's a bit nerdy, but I kind of have fun doing it. So I mean, like if if I'm a health coach, like I'm allowed to have some nerdy nerdy interests. So this I was doing some research on this, and just from like looking at this with my own analytical brain, I saw a couple of things. So one of the first things I noticed was. Your heart rate variability is inversely correlated with your heart rate. So if your heart rate is high, so if your heart rate is like in a higher range, like your, your, your heart is beating fast, the heart rate variability is usually very low. And I found this really interesting. It might be helpful for me to just explain what heart rate variability is and, and why, why you should care about it. When you're like what heart rate variability is, is not, it's not your heart rate. Your heart rate is say how many how many times your heart beats per minute what heart rate variability is doing is measuring the difference in the distance between those beats so if you think about when you're in a fight or flight nervous system state like you're very stressed or if you're like exerting yourself or doing exercise your heart is very rhythmic it's like beat 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 B, like it's almost exactly the same amount of time in between every single beat. There's a rhythm to it. What heart rate variability is, is where your heart is, it can still beat the same amount of times in, in a minute. So, so it's the same amount of heartbeats, but the distance between them is, is more different. So that would look like it's like beat, 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 
B, 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 B. So it's like there's more of a variability. It's less, it's less, less rhythmic. And the reason this is really important is generally higher heart rate variability is like your biggest indicator of recovery. If your body is stressed, if your body isn't, if your body isn't healing, if it's not able to get into a healing place, your heart rate variability will be low. Your heart rate variability won't be as high. The higher your heart rate variability is, the deeper of a healing state that your body is, is entering. So there's a couple of things that you can do that improve your heart rate variability. So anything that, that, that calms you down, anything that reduces your stress. So like meditation, being, being mindful, um, sleeping and naps, like these will all bring your heart rate down and therefore bring your heart rate variability up. This, this, um, the best way to measure this is actually not just to measure like your heart rate variability as a one-off. It's actually to take an average. So the or the thing I really like about the aura ring is it tracks your sleep. So it's, it's tracking your heart rate variability over the whole night. And then it gives you a maximum variability and it gives you an average of what your average. And the average is what's really, really helpful here. The average is the, the metric that you really be looking at. So if the, if the average is high, this is a really good indicator that your body is entering rest and digest. You're moving into a parasympathetic nervous system state. So if you think about when you're in fight or flight, your, your, your body is stressed and your heartbeat needs to be regular because your body is saying, I need a regular supply of oxygen. I need a predictable supply of oxygen. I need to know that the waste is being moved out of the cells and I need to know that the blood is being pumped there and the nutrients are being pumped there so that we can like function at, at an optimal level. Like there's stress. When you're asleep or when you're, when you're in a state where your heart, your HRV is higher. So your heart rate is low and your HRV is high. Your body is like, I'm chill. I'm relaxed. And it's like going with the flow a little bit more. It's less rigid. It's less, um, routine. And this is, this is basically measuring your fight or flight versus your rest and digest. It's measuring your sympathetic versus your parasympathetic activity and sympathetic dominance is basically what but is it's a huge cause of chronic disease if you're looking at like nervous system dysregulation if you're looking at dysautonomia if you're looking at um just generally being stuck in fight or flight like you will see reductions in stomach acid production you'll see reductions in detoxification you'll see reductions in bile flow you see reductions in motility or motility imbalances so you're looking at like constipation or diarrhea like however however it looks basically anything that that happens in your body that you would consider a healing process is dysregulated or is downregulated when you're in a fight or flight so if you're having higher hrv that's an indicator that you're in more of a parasympathetic nervous system in more of a rest and digest nervous system this means you're going to have better stomach acid secretions you're going to have better motility you're going to have better ability to detoxify when you're in this state, your adrenal glands are replenishing. So if you're in fight or flight, your adrenal glands are fatiguing. They're using their stress hormones and they're running out of, of energy. If, you're, if your HRV is high, you're in a parasympathetic nervous system state. This means your adrenal glands are literally recharging. They're, they're replenishing. They're restoring themselves. So that when you do move into a, a, a fight or flight state or a sympathetic dominant state. And again, it's not bad. You know, we need these systems. Like right now doing this video, I'm in sympathetic dominance because my body is like, we need to think, we need to make sure that what I'm saying is coherent. I need to like not make myself look stupid. You know, like <laughs> my, my body is like, I need to be, I need to be able to be responsive. And I bet you if I measured my HRV right now, it would be really low. Like it would be really, really, really low. But what is important is when I stop, my body can can adjust it can say okay we're not in a stressful situation anymore we don't need to perform we can calm down and then if i were to go and have a nap if my body's able to move into that sympathetic state very very quickly you're going to see the heart the hrv the, the heart rate variability is going to begin to increase really really quick so the reason that i really like this as a as a metric to measure is you can do it at home like you can literally live your day a certain way and see how that impacts your your HRV. And then you do something the next day and you see, like, for example, I took a probiotic and I saw my HRV scores plummet. And that made me think, oh, maybe it's not the right probiotic for me. But then I was like, hmm, maybe not. Maybe it's a die-off reaction. Maybe it's a Herxheimer. Or maybe it's something like that. So I stuck with it. You know, I moved through like three or four days and now I'm starting to see a HRV increase. So it's like initially it went down and I was feeling a bit kind of crummy. 
But then, but then as my body is adjusting and I'm getting the benefits instead of the die off, I'm seeing improvements in my, in my HRV score. So it's a really cool thing that you can use to actually measure how you're feeling and, and how you're doing and how your body is recovering. Another one that can be really helpful is if you had a chronic illness and fatigue has been a problem, like chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal fatigue, or um, if you're someone that used to like kind of get into an energy debt and like you would overdo it one day and then you'd have to pay for it the next day. So you, you, you basically incur a debt. This is so helpful. You can see it, it will track for you like when you're asleep and you can look at the, you can look at the HIV and several other scores as well. And it shows you this is how well your body's recovering. Like this is how well you handled your activity yesterday. And it will literally say like, this is the aura, aura ring specifically. It will literally say you did more activity. So this is actually me today. It said you did more activity than average uh, yesterday. And now your body's a little bit worn out. Like normally my, like my score, it's got like a couple of algorithms and it collects all of this different data and gives you a score. Usually it says like you, you slept really good. You did the right level of activity. Your activity, like your readiness score for today is like 85, 90. That's like my average score. And anything above 85 is considered like, like perfect, like optimal. Like it's really hard to get any higher than 85 or 90. It's really, really hard. So I'm usually in the 85, 90 range. Today I woke up and I was 74 and I was like, oh God, that's really, really low. And then before I check, I always like to kind of check in with myself and see how I'm feeling. Because I think when you see this, the, the numbers, it can kind of, if you're feeling good and then you see a low number, you can be like, eh, maybe I don't feel as good as I think. But I woke up and I was like, I kind of feel really crap today. And then I checked and the, and the ring was saying like, you're actually spot on. Like you are actually not feeling as good as, as maybe you, you might think. But it also put it in a really kind way. It said like, you outdid yourself yesterday. You performed athletically like 20% above your average. So some well-deserved rest has been earned today. Like you should take care of yourself. You should take it easy. If it doesn't feel good, don't push yourself. Today is a day for rest. And it's really nice. It's really nice to just have like some technology that's actually support. It's like giving me feedback that's actually supporting what I'm thinking. Because sometimes it's really hard, you know, to to know if you're doing the right thing or if like you're self sabotaging or like it's it's really hard. Like it's it's a, it's a difficult process that you will get better at as you practice. Like I've been doing this in like nearly a decade now, so I'm I'm really getting that. I'm really starting to understand. But having a little confirmation, like a little like logical, scientific, analytical data. It's like your heart rate variability shows you're not recovering very well from what happened yesterday. So you need to take it easier today and do more things today that are going to keep your heart rate variability higher. So rest more, relax more, have a nap. Don't, don't go and do too much exercise kind of thing. Really, really helpful. So long story short, HRV generally is the best metric and you can there's loads of other things you can you can go on google and just type heart rate variability and start learning about it it's literally the best metric to track in terms of are you healing is your body recovering from what's happening to you in a daily basis and you can use it to to help you measure like what what's working for you and what isn't i would say like the average scores are they they change a little bit as you as you age so for every Every, every 10 years or so, you, your heart rate variability score will decrease by, say, like 5 or 10%. But if you're in that upper part of that range, you, you, you're generally doing a, a, pr- a pretty good job. Your body is, is, is adapting. It's recovering well. I also really like this because sometimes when you're going through things where you still have, like, many obvious symptoms, you can feel like you're not making any progress. It can feel really, really hard. One of my clients has been using the Aura Ring for a long time before me. This is, he's actually kind of inspired me to get it. He was using it for three or four months. And he, he showed me his heart rate variability score, like since we started working till today. And he's had some obvious results, but it was really cool to see, like he was on this positive trend. Like he was, his heart rate variability score was increasing before we even started working together. And then since we've continued working together, his heart rate variability score has just been like this. This massive increase in, in the positive. And when you've got that kind of data, like when you can see, like objectively, my heart rate variability score has increased by 20% over the last three months. It's like you are 20% healthier, like measurably. And that feels good. Like that's a nice thing to be able to measure. That feeling of progress, I think personally, is really, really important and really, really valuable because healing is a, it's not always the easiest thing to measure. So 
this this as a score, the heart rate variability as a score is a really good thing to measure because it doesn't lie. It it really shows you you how you're doing, on, and it's not just like in the long run, but yes, in the long run, but also on a day to day basis. If you're getting sick, like one or two days before you get symptoms, your HRV score will plummet. You will see it crash. This is one of the things that when I was doing some research, I saw over and over again as people say. Whenever I'm going to get sick, my aura ring, my Apple watch, it tells me. Like I know two days before I'm going to get sick, that I'm going to get sick because my HRV score reduces by like 10, 15, 25%. And that's because it is the best metric. It really is going to show you. It's really going to indicate to you very, very quickly, very reliably how, how you're doing, how your body is adapting to stress, how your body is adapting to I would, yeah, it's stress, but it's not just stress physic, like, it's all forms of stress. It's how is your body adapting to physiological stress, like, like exercise, like exertion, like, um, toxins in your blood. Like, so to give you another example, I'm, my body is working through some things with, with my immune system and my tolerance to FODMAPs, to certain FODMAPs, particularly like garlic and especially raw garlic has dropped. Like I, I'm struggling to tolerate garlic at the minute. It's not working for me. I had it one day before bed and my, my digestive system was just like, this is not right for us today. This is really bad. And I could feel it. And I checked my score the next day and it said, Whatever you did yesterday was a disaster. Like you've absolutely trashed your energy. You trashed your HRV. You trashed like whatever you did yesterday. Don't do that. That was not helpful. So like I already knew that because I could already feel how crap it had made me feel. But having some like some software, like some, and I like it because it's software. It's science. It's logic. It's like sometimes you're like, oh, I didn't feel good. Mm." And it's sometimes it can be a bit hard to trust your feelings. But when you see it like objectively, like data, like a data point saying you did this and this is what happened and look at, look at what it did to your body. You're like, okay, that wasn't good for me that day. And it can be really, really helpful. It can be really, really clarifying. Especially as it's like confirming what you already believe or what you, what you're already thinking. So HRV, in my opinion, the number one metric to measure healing and recovery. You don't have to even have a chronic health problem for this to be good for you. This is the best way to measure how your body is recovering from, from like training or from working out. If you're working out too intensely, that doesn't actually help you build muscle. That doesn't actually help you get strong. It just destroys you. It tanks your adrenal glands and it just makes you feel like crap. It'll make your cortisol spike, which will make you want to eat more. You'll overeat because your body's trying to adapt and handle stress. More is not better. The right amount is the right amount. And it's really hard to figure out what the right amount is if you don't have metrics to measure it. So HRV is a really, really cool metric to measure it. If you want more info about Aura, so this is the ring that I use, let me know and I'll, we can have a little chat. I can, um, I can just share with you a little bit more about my experience and whether it might be a good idea for you. But there are other options as well. Like the Apple smartwatch is also a really, uh, a really common one that I've been hearing some good things about. But the metric to measure HRV, best way to do it is to track your HRV scores overnight, like as you're sleeping and then average them. That is the, that is the best way to get a measure on how effective it is, whatever it is that you're doing, how well you're hit. Like you can literally use it as a score. How well am I healing? Or like how, how able is my body to enter a parasympathetic nervous system state, which is the healing nervous system state. That's basically what you're measuring there. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And if you're interested in getting an aura ring or you just want to ask me some questions about it, again, leave me a comment or shoot me a message. I absolutely don't mind. I'll get back to every single person. Hope you're doing well. Take care. And I hope this information is really, really helpful, helpful for you. See you soon. Bye.